What is your relationship with the DNR like? I would say it's largely great. Um, you know, the new director has been doing very well in his new role. Uh, I can't remember. He's been around maybe six months or so. Yeah. Um, he he would not be what I would would have considered for a traditional DNR director, but what what he does know is he knows state government. He knows what he knows and he knows what he doesn't know. And he relies heavily on his staff for the things that he's not an, an expert himself on. Um, and, you know, we, we talk to the biologists all the time. If, if there's something coming up with the legislature, you know, I'll either call their their legislative liaison or one of their biologists, ask what they think. Um, our, our relationship is, is pretty good with them right now. Uh, that's not to say we don't have speed bumps. I mean, there's the whole Great Lakes consent decree issue where we're actually in litigation with the department and the state of Michigan over how tribal and commercial state commercial anglers share or sorry state recreational anglers share the, the fishery so you know watchdog bites when we have to but generally i would say our, our working relationship with the department is very good yeah i think it's based on our, our mission state you know you know to unite citizens to conserve protect and enhance our net michigan's natural resources and outdoor heritage we understand the importance of a strong dnr you know that they need to be well funded they need great biologists that the leadership needs to listen to those biologists who are in the field and that you know we understand that there's our natural resources are what we love to, to utilize. And so we know that they need to be managed, but it's like Justin said, you know, we're not gonna sit there and be a mouthpiece for them if they're in the wrong or if they're doing something that's overstepping. We get accused a lot of being in bed with the DNR, but it could be really the farthest thing from the truth. While we have the great working relationship on lots of topics, we saw in 2020 when they tried to have the motorized boating ban, we sued them then as well because that was unconstitutional and it was an executive order that made no sense. And so we got that overturned. And during COVID, when you were supposed to social distance, MUCC is the reason you were able to be on your boat here in Michigan and get out there and enjoy those pastimes. So, you know, there's definitely a fine line that we walk. We kind of see that as an offense defense kind of mindset where we want to help them in ways that it strengthens them to manage our resources better. But we're also going to play defense if that there's a egregious overstep or something that we know is not correct in following our mission statement to really conserve, protect, and enhance. Yeah, I think I think we follow the same thing, whereas I'm kind of explaining is like my life mission, like if you were to ask everyone in this office what our goal is, it's to sell more hunting and fishing licenses. Literally, that's our goal. Uh, we believe in the North American model. We, we believe in the fact that buying hunting licenses goes to help and conserve and uh, defend our natural resources. We believe all of that, and that's our main goal. And... I'll be honest, when we started the show about eight years ago, I was a little, na we were young, but we were also a little naive in the fact that it was like, that was like where my conversation would stop. And honestly, I was getting yelled at by Ted Nugent every other day was, uh, he's like, you need to also hold them accountable. You can't have blind faith in anybody. You know what I mean? Because this law doesn't make sense and this law doesn't make sense and this law doesn't make sense. And that's where you guys come in where you're kind of like the the beacon of it's kind of like you're their parent in the weirdest way. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 not that, not that. Okay, there we go, there we go, there we go. And uh, yeah. you know, it's it's kind of like that. But also, I, I, it's probably the best branch of government we have. I would say, you know, what I mean, as far as like, I agree with them on a lot of things. You know, what I mean, and that that's a good thing. It should be that way. If it ever gets to the point where I don't agree with ninety percent, then we're in a big, big problem. You know, um. I'm going to make this point just because we've made it before, and I think it's kind of an interesting one, too. We, we've been to Idaho. We've been to 43 states now filming and worked with DNRs in almost, I would say, two-thirds of those states. And uh, in one of the states, the fishing game that we worked with there is Idaho. And out of all the states I've been to, I have never been more impressed with a, a fishing game or Department of Natural Resources than I was with Idaho Fishing Game. Uh, the the gentleman we worked with there, uh, his name is Brett High, and he is a uh, uh, he's a biologist. And we did a, a snakehead ep or not a snakehead a uh, um, uh, cutthroat cutthroat episode with them, uh, talking about the cutthroat trout in the in the river systems there. And then we also did a uh, ice fishing episode again on cutthroat, but kind of covering different conservation stories on those in the Snake River as well as remote lakes and that sort of thing. But in talking to him, like. Idaho bases all of their decisions, basic uh, their fishing game, almost the way MUCC does, where they put out a survey and they live by it. So people are determining how they're spending their money, what they're focused on, and what they're doing. 
and one of the one of the major things to me that I noticed too, we were at one of the lakes called Henry's Lake, and there were some fishermen walking out to go out on the lake, and the Brett stopped them as well as a, they had a DNR officer with them and another biologist as well, or I had a PR guy, and they they stopped the fishermen. And they were talking to them, and the relationship was incredible. Um, there were, they didn't even ask to see their licenses or anything like that. It was it was it was uh, you know what are you catching? What are you seeing? What are you happy with? What are you not happy with? And they didn't do it for the cameras. We weren't filming. It was like that was the relationship that was there. And we got to talking to Brett while we were ice fishing. And uh, I think Ryan might have asked it. But we went through some of the laws like we explained to you guys, like the ones that we have problems with. And he said that he finds overall that, and this is off a point that you made, he finds that overall the states that have really effective really good relationships with the people, those DNR offices or those fishing game offices tend to be biologist driven, meaning all the decisions are made off of the biologist. He said the states where the relationship is sour between the people and the Department of Natural Resources and fishing game almost coincides directly with how much of the police force management the DNR takes. So there's a police force thought process and there's a biologist thought process. You must follow the law no matter what. Hold on. Let's make sure we're making these laws make sense. And based on like the grade that you would give, let's say if you gave Michigan a B my B plus or you gave Idaho an A or you gave another state, let's say uh, uh, the Macarena state, you gave a C minus, you would be able to coincide how much police force uh, management is used versus how much bio biologist information is used in order to make the laws and establish a relationship with the people. And what you said was interesting to me is we need to hold them accountable because if they do something wrong that doesn't make sense and you name some things, I mean, you had to become constitutional, which means you're talking about, to me, that means police force overstepping their bounds with constitutional rights as far as being able to go on your boat and that sort of thing. But you said it yourself where it's like, we need to make sure their DNR is listening to their biologists. And 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 that is that almost always seems to be the key. And then ever since that day when we had that conversation with him, I've watched it in all the conversations that I've had, hundreds of conversations with different DNRs, fishing games, podcasts, people, so on and so forth. It just seems as though the more the biologists are heard, the better mm -hmm. the relationship between the DNR and the people is because it makes scientific sense as opposed to this police state unconstitutional push. Our biologists are given – a lot of leash with this new director. He trusts them because he is not one. Um, the other cool thing about Michigan's biologists that I'll say from the most of them that I know, uh, they're hunters too, or, or anglers, whatever right. the case may be. And when I shot my bear last fall, one of the first people I texted was a bear biologist. Cause right. I know he's a hunter and he, you know, I wanted him to see it too. So, um, and it was a dandy bear. I wanted to show it off, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they're one of us. Like a lot of them are. So it, it's really great that they live, they live what they're doing as well. And I, I think, I think part of it too, is like overall mentally since that day and me watching for it, I tend to try and advocate where I can for the biologist having that loose leash. Uh, and that makes me happy to hear that that's kind of the direction it sounds like Michigan's taking. Is this new guy? Well, it's also a funding issue, too. We know that right now that our DNR here in Michigan's got some funding issues. And so as some things change, you know, I think there's a lot of people who just want to blame the DNR for things, but don't really look into the nuance or how things are managed in the past and what new changes are coming to make the biologists be able to do their job better so they can get better reporting so that we can do better management. So it's also a funding concept here in Michigan where we're probably going to see some changes coming down the road with our license structure fees and other things like that. Um, but it's all in the benefit to maintain our natural resources and our, you know, our outdoor heritage. Without the management of these species, we won't have that outdoor heritage to live and pass on to my kids and your kids and anyone else that comes through the, through the door.